we don't even have time to go through the daily history bit intro for today because there is just too much to cover. What is to cover is the very large, very big amount of changes given in today's reset in the beta. Also important and lucky that we just had our coverage of the results of the latest beta testing because now we can compare the results that the specs were having with the changes Blizzard is giving to each of these specs. So, you know, logically, we would be expecting buffs to Warlocks or buffs to Rogues, perhaps buffs to Shadow Priest or Maxmanship Hunter. We are expecting nerfs to, to BM Hunter, to the Shamans, for example, to Arms Warrior or to Augmentation Evoker based on the results. Now we see what Blizzard thinks of the results specs have been having in the beta. So let's start with the changes to DK. These are one of the least changed classes. We have a significant set of buffs to Deathbringer for Frost DK because right now Frost DK is primarily playing with Rider of the Apocalypse. So it's another attempt of Blizzard to buff certain underplayed hero talents. What's more relevant to the changes of DK is the buffs coming as a surprise to Frost because Frost Strike and Obliterate are buffed by 8% and even the possibility of going back to a Breath of Sinjagosa build, which for the moment you have kind of, kind of ignored, kind of forgotten nowadays as a Frost DK, that's also been buffed. Now, we didn't actually keep track of the results of Frost because they didn't have enough logs in the raid, but they were performing well. They were actually doing quite well, especially also in Mythic Plus. So it comes perhaps as a bit of a surprise to see Frost DK being buffed. Now, when it comes to tanks, we're going to skim over them quickly because practically all tanks are getting their damage buffed by 10 to 15% across the board. So it's not really an advantage to any particular tank. They're all being buffed at about the same amount. Positive changes to Havoc Demon Hunter. Now, we have talked about the divide of Havoc between their Felscard uh, build and their Aldrachi River build. Aldrachi River was massively, massively ahead in single target. Felscard was somewhat decent in AoE, but still lagging too far behind in single target to compare, to match. Now, these changes are nerfing Aldrachi River, just flat out. They are buffing Theory of the Aldrachi, sure, but what is more relevant are the buffs to given to Felscard to make it more relevant in single target. This gigantic buff over here, Burning Blaze now dealing 60% of your auto attack and kill strike damage instead of 15%, which is quite relevant given the damage of a Havoc Demon Hunter with kill strike in single target is relevant. Now it has brought Fels card to be much more of a possibility in single target. It's still weaker than Aldrachi River, but not nearly as weak compared to just a few weeks ago. The other positive change for Havoc is that flat out doubling the damage of Ibeam, better QOL in giving you the older version, the 30% chance to refunding Immolation Aura. This is again after a series of kind of abandonments of power of Ibeam, where nowadays Ibeam is nowhere near, nowhere near the level of power that it used to have for a Havoc Demon Hunter. It was always weaker in single target, sure, but not to this extent levels of weak. So it is overall a positive single target buff to Fels card with a slight AoE nerf, kind of the reverse for Aldrachi Reaver. Their single target has been nerfed, their AoE is now slightly stronger, and also then the tank given a damage buff. Now, given the results of Havoc, this is a roughly neutral set of changes, it's not really moving around the performance of Havoc by much. What is being moved around are the changes to Druid. So Druid is getting changes across the board because Druid of the Claw, their talent tree for Feral Light Guardian, is being buffed significantly. Again, similar to other instances because the other specs weren't really playing with Druid of the Claw. Feral was playing Wild Stalker, Guardian was playing the Arcano Bear Fury of a Loon build. So it's just a set of buffs to try to make. Tear of the Claw, more appealing to both Feral and Guardian, which is expected given the treatment Blizzard has given to the underplayed hero talents. What's more relevant are the direct changes, though, to all four of the specs of Druid. So for Feral, it's like a small 
two something percent buff if you take the, the, the melee auto attack damage the rip and the rake periodic damage increased by five percent it's, it's roughly a couple of percentage of damage increase there is a positive overall change for guardian druid because they are getting their default damage buffed but their synergy with fury of the loon arcane damage moonfire damage is being reduced so now it makes it again more appealing to go to move away from fury of the loon and try to play something like druid of the claw without losing as much damage as you were before the more relevant changes are to balance although they are pretty disappointing because the overall damage of all of this the spell damage increased by six percent and a few other talents which are not nearly as exciting as it might look like because wild mushroom Humble Inspiration, Astral Communion, all being buffed is good, except you're not actually playing with these talents, at least in single target. So it is roughly an 8 to 9% buff if you include also the buffs to the tier set. The problem though was of course that you still have problems in your general spec 3 plus your healer talent 3. The damage of your spenders at the moment is too weak compared to the damage of your, of your finishers, so to speak. You also have problems in here where getting buffed by 8 to 9% given your you know most recent results is still a bit too little. We will see other specs being buffed by significantly more despite having done better than Balanced Druid recently in, in testing. So while it's positive you're being buffed, it's still kind of sad that the buff is not that big restoration druid gets their major cooldown nerfed and the other two cooldowns buffed because tree of life is getting nerfed but in return you're getting convoke the spirits to cast four more spells and you get flourish to last two more seconds their, their actual nerf isn't in the healing it's in the damage practically almost all of their damage relevant damage is being nerfed by 15 percent which is understandable because of the damage they can do in mythic plus mostly it's a pretty neutral set of changes considering how much they have been buffed before and how much better they have been performing up to now to not really receive any major nerfs is pretty good for for a rest of the druid now talking about talking about major nerfs you have evoker getting augmentation maj majorly nerfed again because you have ebon might again getting nerfed in the amount of primary stat it gives and then even more nerfs because closest clash mates now is gone this was the passive buff which increased this these values also the values of your breath of eons in mythic plus when you were not in the raid this was by the way just remember the good old days of augmentation being unnerfed this used to be 40 percent giving you more Ebon Might value and Breath of Eons value outside of the raid by 40% more. And now nerf after nerf, it has been completely removed. So this value is actually upwards of a 30% nerf when it comes to Mythic Plus, plus the nerf to Breath of Eons, making augmentation even weaker now. So now we are entering possible territory of augmentation not being the default best thing slot DPS for Mythic Plus. For the raid it's unlikely it's going to it's going to lose out too much because of this there is also a slight fix a cheese fix with consume flame for evoker no longer no longer being increased based on the healing taken modifiers on the target this was the funny little cheese evokers could do by by getting a massively buffed dream breath because of the new tier set plus uh, call of Ysera plus their new talent in flame shaper and then get themselves to be given Guardian Spirit or Life Cocoon for massively increased healing so that when you would use Consume Flame, the healing that Consume Flame would do to the entire raid was scaling with the increased healing you had on yourself with things like Guardian Spirit. And now this is gone. Now for Hunter, we have something we have touched on before, which was the changes to Dark Ranger, the buffs, the basically the doubling the damage of Black Arrow. This was pointed out before as well. A bunch of different, you know, hot fixes and minor changes. What is more relevant are the <laughs> nerfs given to Beast Mastery. So if you count the nerfs to Laceration itself, plus the nerf to Kill Command, which is about 4% damage nerf, the one to Hans Masters, Hati and Fenrir being called. It's a 4 to 5% damage nerf. Dire Beast is almost 1%. You have the, the old melee things being nerfed. It's another almost 2% nerf. And then the barb shot damage as well. It's another 1% nerf. When you add all of these together, plus the basically the hotfix that stopped your laceration to simply tick out of control and come out to have results like, like this one, you know, where 
maceration was a single talent point in your three doing 20 percent of your damage right when this was fixed it's practically an almost 30 percent damage nerf so from the bug the results of the beta this would bring you down to like 720 730,000 dps which is uh, quite more in line with the rest of the average performers survival though is also being nerfed however we don't care about this in fact very few hunters were caring about this in the raid because what was powerful about survival was their aoe being able to match or beat even the op elemental shamans and having very high aoe damage overall because of the damage of the wildfire bomb and their newly shoehorned into by blizzard explosive shot now this is being nerfed heavily because wildfire bomb is being nerfed by 25 percent yes you have the compensation buff in single target where now it does more damage on a single target but the aoe damage being nerfed is quite significant this is roughly a 10 percent damage nerf in aoe for survival it is also uh, an equal almost single target buff but you were definitely more into your power in aoe as a survival hunter less so about your single target damage so this is quite hurtful for the spec then we have mage now i'm sick and tired of talking about mage most of these changes are slight fixes to the hero talents not being played by the specs like arcane some fury that is not really being played you have some again multiple fixes to the attempts of blizzard of, fi of fixing the power of lit fuse and leaving bomb in single target for fire mage what is more relevant though are the changes to arcane arcane now is becoming significantly worse perhaps not even because of their damage just because of their playstyle they are getting their mastery significantly, significantly increased in the damage of Arcane Barrage and Arcane Blast, but their base damage of those two abilities is being nerfed significantly, which means you now have more value going for mastery. But this also puts more value into you finding some two points to spend to go into Prodigious Savant, because even more mastery scaling with this talent. But what's even worse than this change is <laughs> this fixing of an issue it's funny because this issue has existed in the game for like four years for arcane and even exists to this day on plenty of other spells but anyways blizzard fixed the issue that was allowing the last stack of nether precision to be double dipped by spell queuing Nether precision is your bread and butter is the 20 percent damage increase you get to your two main abilities after you consume clear casting with arcane missiles this spell queuing, the double dipping, is the classic cast an ability and then queue an instant ability right after. And both of those abilities will be able to benefit from the same buff. Even things like trinkets that count the abilities you hit every time work like this. You can cheese extra stacks by casting an arcane blast. And by the time arcane blast finishes, you queue up and instantly cast arcane barrage. And both of them will benefit from the buff. In this case, from the buff of nether precision, making both of them 20% stronger. With this hotfix, this is gone. With this hotfix now, you will not get 20% more damage from both of those abilities. You are double dipping, but only from the first one, only from Arcane Blast. So Arcane Barrage right after will lose the damage. This is bad, not just because it's a nerf in damage, but also because it is changing and worsening your rotation. So you have the risk of losing what you gained with this rework, which is a much more spread and even sort of trio of, of rotation of abilities between these three. Now it might, it, you might lose out on this a little bit more after, after this change. Then Monk. So again, you have the buff to the damage of the tanks going for Brewmaster as well. You have some slight changes to Mistweaver, but the major changes are going to Windwalker. Now, to be fair, it's not even a significant buff. I know it looks exciting when you read all of these, all of these texts for Windwalker, but most of this is very minor. You know, it's like increasing the damage of tiger palm with touch of the tiger or five percent more crit with blackout cake or rushing jade wind which you don't use at the moment increased by 30 percent in damage so you have some slight buffs here and there all of these combined all of these combined are in the realm of, of a three percent four percent buff overall which is still decent considering your performance was already doing okay so this is another what 20 25,000 more DPS, which will bring you more in line with the average, top average of results. But more than that is the QOL, because the QOL, which includes, amongst many, the biggest one, the, 
the QOL around Whirling Dragon Punch now having a grace period where it will remain usable when Rising Sun Kick or Fist of Fury complete their cooldowns. So you have now an easier time lining up the availability of your Dragon Punch with the cooldowns of your two other abilities you have to you know, line up to be able to use Whirling Dragon Punch. So it is a quite nice change. There are, uh, there are some other few decent additions like Chi Burst changes and Fury of Zhuan increased duration, but the Whirling Dragon Punch KOL was definitely the bigger one. Then we have the set of changes to Paladins. Again, Wall of Text to Holy Paladin. This one is positive. Blizzard is trying to nerf your steroids and your buffs that improve your abilities and instead buffing your base abilities. For example, Blessing of Dawn power to, to increase the power of your spenders, stacking by 20%. Now it's only down to 5%, but in return, your spenders are now more powerful by default. Same for your damage, multiple QOLs for your damage, like Judgment having a 50% chance to give you Consecration, you have damage increase of Hammer of Wrath, you have damage increase of your Crusader Strike as well, but in return, Blessing of Summer now only transfers 12% of healing into damage, which used to be 20%. So you have the single button you used to do 80% of your damage from, nerfed by almost 50%, but now your base abilities are stronger. So it is overall a positive change for you. Going back to giving you more power to your base kit rather than several sets of buffs and procs and steroids. The only risk now is that with this many changes, especially to the damage of Crusader Strike and also the buff of the cooldown reduction of Crusader's Might for your Judgment and Holy Shock, is that now you risk getting closer to the days where you were playing Avenging Crusader. At this point, Holy Paladin has almost completely ditched the cast Master Paladin already without even playing with Avenging Crusader but you know the infusions are gone even bothering to use Hand of Divinity for your Holy Light that's also gone even playing with Inflorescence now has dropped over in favor of Imperial Legacy so now with even more buffs to Crusader Strike you might be going into Season 1 Dragonflight Avenging Crusader playstyle which is very not that good at the moment, it's still very RNG, you don't have a lot of power over who you are actually healing with Avenging Crusader, it's mostly RNG. Yes, now your Holy Shock is much more powerful and your spenders, especially the single target one with Herald of the Sun, are much stronger, but there is this fear from some Paladins that Avenging Crusader might become again the meta, given that it's still a bit too clunky right now in the beta. But overall, you know, you have not really been nerfed, and you were doing well before as a Holy Paladin, so you're still doing fine right now. Rekt is being changed, I guess, positively. Their AUE damage is being buffed significantly and their single target is being nerfed. That's all. It's about a five or so percent single target nerf by taking all of their, almost all, of their single target abilities and nerfing them by quite a bit. In return, their AoE stuff is being buffed, so Blade of Vengeance, the, the AoE version of your Blade of Justice is being buffed. You have Divine Storm, massive buff, 25%. So apparently Blizzard judged this single target damage to be a bit too much and is nerfed by 5%, so down to 730 something thousand damage instead of what they had before in exchange though at least for some some aoe buffs interesting changes to priest most of this stuff is irrelevant because it is buffing talents you weren't even taking before to begin with the positive one is that now you have manipulation and surge of light on a one talent point this is good because now you only take one point for surge of light meaning you now have one point free to take angelic bulwark so it is even though it's not that big it's still a slight quality of life for your defensive power as a priest. Shadow Priest doesn't get a massive damage increase, but it does get a very good quality of life increase because now you have your Shadow Priest change, which makes you have your Mind Flay Insanity channeling the same amount of damage, so it's not nerfed, but the same amount of damage over one and a half seconds instead of two. This used to be three. And then it was buffed down to two second cast or two second channel and now one and a half second channel. So it's a much more, much smoother rotation for Shadow Priest. You also get the 3% all damage given to you and a series of other buffs here and there, not nearly as, as big as the quality of life change of your Mind Spike Insanity. To be fair, we were expecting some larger buffs because of the performance of Shadow Priest, maybe in the 10 to 15-ish percent range given the damage they had. So this is perhaps 
slightly smaller compared to what we expected. There are some decent changes to Holy Priest, not nearly as big as we would have wanted to see buffs for Holy Priest. You have Circle of Healing buffed by 30%, which is irrelevant because it doesn't do any healing. Prayer of Healing being buffed by 30%, this is more relevant, in exchange though for Healing Chorus being nerfed. This might be a good change for the variety of Holy Priest, because now that you have Healing Chorus being nerfed in exchange for Circle of Healing healing more by default, you might not feel forced to take Healing Chorus, meaning you might be taking Prayer Circle, which is what you used to take before, which synergizes really well with your tier set, because now you can take Revitalizing Prayers that has a chance to leave behind a Renew. Your tier set has a 50% chance to double cast Prayer of Healing, so you have a double chance to leave behind a Renew, and then by taking Prayer Circle, you can spam this Prayer of Healing with faster cast time and lower mana cost. That's the one slight positive change for Holy Priest. More significant positive changes go the way of Discipline, although not as much as you would have wanted to. You have finally some discounts in your Talent 3. Unfortunately, these are shit, because Contrition is a talent you're not taking, so even if it gets discounted by one, it's irrelevant, and Heaven's Wrath gets discounted by one, which you are not taking still. We have complained about having to take four talent points to, to be able to spec into Ultimate Penitence. Now you takes three, which is still slightly too much. To fix, to fix this, this one has to go down to one. If Blaze of Light also goes down to one, then the talent tree now is much better for discipline. You do have also another buff to Oracle, because you do gain 5% more damage as a discipline priest, but Abyssal Reverie now increases your atonement healing by only 10% instead of 20. So now you lose 10% atonement healing pretty much all the time because you only want to heal inside of your shadow damage, shadow covenant windows. However, where you get back a lot of this damage to turn into healing is in the buff given to Oracle, where now you have preventive measures increasing Penance, Smite, and Holy Nova damage by 40%. When it used to be 15. You went from 15 to 40% more Penance and Smite damage if you are playing Oracle. So it's another push to try to get more players to finally make Oracle Discipline happen right now. Slightly disappointing though, again, the amount of buffs given to Discipline we were expecting perhaps slightly more. Talking about expecting slightly more, we continue to have just percentage aura buffs given to rogues again and again. Subtlety is the one that gets the least because it gets Unseen Blade buffed by 80%, which is, seems like a big number, but Unseen Blade is terrible. So this is like a 3%, 4% damage buff for a subtlety. But Outlaw and Assassination get much bigger buffs. Assassination gets, again, another 10% damage increase to Ability Damage, Auto Attack Damage, and Crimson Tempest buffed again. Outlaw gets, again, 10% more damage, Auto Attack Damage, and Killing Spree also buffed by 10%. So, across these, Outlaw and Assassination were the worst performing, and Subtlety was the one needing the least help. That's true. Although admittedly the same damage of Assassination is already quite high and higher than Subtlety, it's just that not many players are playing Assassination in the beta testing, so they perhaps need fewer buffs than they actually let on by the results. Basically they are sandbagging the results to get more buffs. Who is not getting buffs is Shaman. Now, I know this hurts because Pretty much every single other spec receiving a rework got their time to shine in the light for a full season or even more. Shaman got their time to shine for like two weeks in the beta. That's kind of the, the problem right now because you have some positive changes here and there, but we're just gonna skip through them to talk about the amount of nerfs that Elemental is receiving. So the culprits here are mostly just Lava Burst, Elemental Blast, Earthquake, and Flame Shock all being nerfed, especially the very chunky 25% to Lava Burst. So, if you look at the damage, just the 25% damage nerf to Lava Burst is almost a 10% nerf to the entire spec, just with that nerf. And then you have to add the Elemental Blast nerf, plus the Flame Shock nerf as well, and in AoE, your Earthquake nerf. Now, if you're playing Farseer, this is not nearly as terrible because your base Elemental Blast is being nerfed, but Farseer's Elemental Blast is being buffed by 20%, so this is only 
a 5% nerf instead, but overall in single target, this is close to like a 12% damage nerf for Elemental Shaman. Now, admittedly though, this 12% nerf becomes slightly smaller because you also get some decent QOL buffs like Liquid Magma Totem now only having a 30 second cooldown. You have Ice Fury damage buffed by 85%, which is good because now your Ice Fury is going to be doing more damage than Lava Burst because with this one buffed by 85% goes to like almost 800,000 damage, whereas this 950,000 damage nerfed by 25% goes to like 730,000. So now your Ice Fury is actually a significant damage increase. You also have, if it actually worked properly, Power of the Maelstrom having a 60% chance to trigger instead of 25. This is very good because Power of the Maelstrom is the one that would make you weave lightning bolts in your rotation. You know, Lava Burst, Lava Burst, Lightning Bolt, Lava Burst, Lava Burst, Lightning Bolt, and that would be a, a bit of a, a more variety in your rotation. Unfortunately, the problem you have is that even if you have these overloads to Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt still hits like a wet noodle. So it still has that problem in this talent uh, being buffed. So this over 10% nerf would bring the test of Elemental Shaman down to somewhere around 790,000 DPS which is still very good. I already read and seen some doomers saying that Elemental Shaman is now garbage or very weak in single target. They absolutely are not. They were overperforming before. And in fact, none of these changes are changing your rotation or making your rotation worse. If anything, they are making it better because now you have more incentive playing around Ice Fury and possibly if they buff Lightning Bolt by a little bit more, they might make it even better by making it worse to actually start using Lightning Bolt. So no, you're not being nerfed to become benched again because Blizzard doesn't care about Shaman and they don't want them to be meta, you still have one of the highest single targets in the game right now, even after these sets of nerfs. We do have the also the already mentioned sets of nerfs given to Announcement and their nerf to Tempest as well, which will impact their performance. For Arsto Shaman, they do actually get nerfed. They are one of the few healers that do get a flat out nerf. <laughs> and actually, and it is actually a significant one because you have all healing reduced by 5% plus Spouting Spirit nerfed by 35%. So with this nerf, you are going to be going down to a million, but that was necessary. If anything, we are more surprised at a few other healers like Mist Weaver, like Preservation Evoker and like Restoration Druid were not nerfed, at least a little bit compared to Restoration Shaman. Besides this though, we have the largest buffs for today that go to Warlock. So yes, players have mentioned this before. Look at this. Let's clip this. Let's picture this. The amount of buffs given to Diabolis. This is the largest set of buffs for today. And for a single hero talent we have seen in a while, we have mentioned and seen Warlocks not doing too well in the beta results. So when it comes to the specs themselves, before going to the hero talents, the buffs given to Affliction, Demo and Destruction, those are in the 4 to 8% range of buffs. Demonology actually is the one buffed the least, 4% buff, 6% for Affliction and the largest buff goes to Destruction, being buffed by about 8% in their abilities. But where you see the largest buffs to go on top of these are the ones to the hero talents. So Diablo Diabolist gets a gigantic amount of buffs because Diabolist and you know their power, the Cloven Souls and Ruination, were doing no damage. They were doing five to six percent more damage, and Blizzard wants to have your hero talents contributing to 15 to 20 percent of your damage done, right? So it was too weak. So it's being giga buffed, and now the buff is almost a 15 percent damage increase just from that. So if you add on top of that, the damage given to Demo and their default abilities, so their Imps are being buffed, their Demon Bolt is being buffed, End of Gul'dan also is being buffed as well. So all of that, plus the buff to Diabolist, it's a 20 something percent buff going the way of Demo. So considering the bad performance of before, you add 20% to this, now Demo is at almost 800,000 DPS, which is almost 
one of the strongest DPS right now. The other Warlock specs do get similar buffs. You have the Fixed Wither. Wither used to be doing 35% more damage because of a bug. Blizzard removed the bug, but then buffed Wither by 35% anyways. So effectively, there is no change there. The other hero talents have been buffed as well. The Black and Soul Empowered damage of Wither for Destro has been buffed by a lot. The base Wither damage has also been buffed by 15% as well. So all of these changes combined to the warlocks are now bringing them all comfortably above 700,000 DPS if you were to base their power on the results of a few days ago going to up and above 750,000 which is more than more than good enough after all of these buffs we finish instead with what is not a buff because it's warrior and it's arms warrior and it's being nerfed very simply, very simply, Mortal Strike has been nerfed by 15% and Overpower has been nerfed by 20%. These two alone are a 7% nerf, plus the fact that Colossus also has received some nerfs, which is the hero talent you were playing with. So arms would go on an almost roughly 10% damage nerf, meaning they would be going down to 710, 720, something thousand DPS. Fury, which was doing much worse in single target than Arms, much better in AoE. Fury is not being buffed in its default power, no spec buffs, but rather in Slayer, which is what they were trying to go for. Significant buffs to pretty much all of the three of, of Slayer for, uh, for Fury Warrior, but perhaps not nearly as large of a damage buff you were expecting given the performance of Fury. Especially when you look at Fury performing similar to Demo and then Demo gets buffed by 20%. Fury is not getting buffed by 20%. It is in fact closer to 2% than it is to, to 20%. So again, some disparity in the treatment of some of these specs when it comes to the balance tuning changes. But this was the, the full list of the balance tuning given out by Blizzard. Tanks being given a bunch more damage to all of them. Not really many negative nerfs to healers, with the exception of the flat out nerfs given to Restoration Shaman. And then a whole list of changes to the DPS. The, at least decent to know that pretty much all of the specs we put in red were buffed, right? Fury, the Warlocks, Subtlety, Assassination, Shadow, Fire, and Balance were buffed. I actually, I guess we skipped Marksmanship in terms of receiving some significant buffs. I guess we can call the Dark Ranger Hero Talent and the Black Arrow buffs also being buffs for Marksmanship. But for today, on this Wednesday, after this massive set of changes that we have gone over, we can now say goodbye to each other. Thanks, of course, as usual, for having watched the video, as well as for supporting for free, like, for example, liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel itself. Now, with these things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys tomorrow. And in the meantime, yep, well, there were just too many things to go over. The, the, video, the video had to be this long.